Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we are going to do a guide on Portmaster. This is an app that allows you to play PC ports on various different Linux-based handhelds. And Portmaster has been around for years. In fact, I remember making an old guide about it, but a lot has changed since then. For example, there are now a ton of different handhelds that work with it. I think we're at over 30 at this point across various different custom firmware options. And so if you've bought any Linux-based handhelds over the past few years, including, you know, the Ambernix and Pow Kitties, chances are you're going to be able to use this guide. In in addition, the amount of PC ports that have grown since then has just been exponential. I think we're at over 550 games that you can play on your device right now. And the great thing about Portmaster is that it streamlines and simplifies the entire installation process. You'll have a nice menu you can navigate through, you can choose your games, and it'll install it right there. Now many of these games are going to be freeware games, which means that you can just play them directly on your device as soon as you install them. But the majority of the games on this platform, including the ones that I like to play, are commercial ports. That means that you have to also own the PC game first, then you'll take some game files, put them in a specific folder, and then you can launch them on your handheld. And so that's what we're going to cover in this video. I'm going to focus on some commercial games that you probably really want to play and show you how to set them up properly using Portmaster on your favorite handheld device. And as always, I've got a written guide to accompany everything, which will walk you through the whole process if you want to do it at your own pace as well. Either way, I've been looking forward to making this video guide for a while. So grab your favorite snack and drink, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to start, let's go back to this full games list that I mentioned before. And you might be wondering how it is that so many different devices are supported by Portmaster. This has got to be a lot of work. Well, one of the reasons why so many different devices are supported is because many of them use the same chipset. Let's start with the handhelds that run on the Rock Chip 3326. This is a chip that's been around for about five years at this point, so there are a lot of different handhelds that use it. And so as a result, many of the custom firmwares do support these devices one way or another, which means that they will work with Portmaster. The next set of devices run on the RK3566. This one's a little bit more powerful than the previous one, but still, as you can see, there are a lot of devices that use the same chip. And then finally, over the past year or so, we've seen a bunch of devices released from Ambernic using the All Winner H700. That's going to be all those devices that have the XX in the name. And I've even added the RG40XXH to this list with an asterisk, just because I know that it's just a matter of time before this one also gets Portmaster support as well. So in a nutshell, with very few exceptions, most of these devices are running on three different chipsets that are very similar. And I know a lot of people don't like that all these companies keep producing so many different handhelds with the same old chip, but this is one of those added benefits from that process. This allows the developers to port over their operating systems and all of those features like Portmaster onto new devices that they release. And so in some ways, it's a good thing that we have all these devices in various shapes and sizes that run on similar chips because that allows us to use things like Portmaster across all of them. Now, in addition to figuring out all the devices that run on Portmaster, I also went through and figured out which operating systems run the app as well. And so here's a quick list of them, and I've got more details about each of them in my written guide linked down below. Long story short, if you have a device listed in the previous slide, but then also running on one of these operating systems listed here, you're probably going to be able to run Portmaster. So now let's jump into a demonstration of Portmaster on a couple different devices. And I picked these two on purpose because they are running with different chipsets and different operating systems as well. On the left, I have the Ambernic RG35XXH. So this is going to be with that all winner H700. And this chipset is relatively new in the whole development scene. And so not a lot of firmwares actually run Portmaster, but Moo OS does. And this one has the most compatibility with this chipset. So I think that's going to be the best example that we can give for any of the XX devices right now. Now on the right side, we're going to use the Palkitty RGB30. This is running the Rock Chip 3566, and it's running an operating system called Rocknix. This is an updated version of Jealous, which you may have heard of before. And so when it comes to showing off installation of Portmaster games, we're going to kind of swap between these two, and we'll start with the Palkitty RGB30. RGB30 first. Now within Rocknix and the other operating systems that support Portmaster, it's usually already installed on the device. Often you'll find it within the ports folder, but Rocknix is a little bit different. You'll find this one under tools. And so really all you have to do is just go into the tool section, make sure your device is connected to the internet, and then turn on Portmaster. And as the app launches, it's going to check to see whether or not there are any new updates, and this app is getting updated all the time, so chances are it will. So just run through the update process. It's going to be a pretty small file so it'll be pretty quick. Of note, they've added a disclaimer to Portmaster the first time you boot it up. 
And this is just to reiterate that Portmaster has nothing to do with piracy in any way. All the games that are ready to run are going to be either freeware or open source, or they have express permission from the developer to host them on Portmaster. And for the paid games, you're going to be on your own to purchase those games to grab those commercial files to make sure that they work within Portmaster. And so that's how the ecosystem works within this app. Now let's take a look at Portmaster itself. This is going to be the main menu. You can see we have a bunch of different options here. The main place you'll probably end up going is going to be in the all ports section. This is going to list all 550 plus games all at once. However, there are other ways to browse the platform. For example, under ready to run ports, these are going to be all those open source games I was just talking about. So each of these games can just be downloaded directly onto your device and you can play them immediately. Further down, we have a manage ports section. Now I've already installed a bunch of games already on this device and so you can see them all listed here. Within this section, I can reinstall or update those package files, and I can also uninstall the game from here as well. Additionally, on the bottom, we have our options menu. Here we have a couple different things we can tweak. For example, you can change out the language of the app, or you can also change out the theme. They've got about eight different options you can choose from. Additionally, on the bottom, you can update all the ports at once, or you can force an update of Portmaster too. Now, because there are so many different games available, you might be overwhelmed with the amount of choice that you have. And the team has recognized that as well, so they have a section called Featured Ports. Within here, they've got three other subsections that allow you to kind of browse through and then pick a game that might be a good place to start. So if you have no idea where to go, then I would recommend grabbing one of these. Okay, now let's actually start installing games. We're going to go down to Ready to Run Ports just to show you how simple this process really is. We're going to start with one of my favorite freeware games. It's this one right here. It is kind of a clone of Tetris, but has some really nice graphics to it. And if you want to install the game, all you have to do is press the A button to show a little bit more info about it, and then press the A button again to do the installation. Depending on the size of the game, it'll take, you know, a few seconds up to a few minutes. And really, it's as simple as that. I've now installed this game. If you're looking for other ready-to-run games that I would recommend, there's a couple others that I really like. I like this one called Rota. It has a rotating aspect to it and is a bit of a puzzle game too. Other games I would recommend include Spelunky as well as Super Mario War. The latter one is actually a lot of fun. It's a multiplayer Mario battle game. Anyway, once you've installed all your favorite ready-to-run ports, let's go ahead and exit out of Portmaster and actually start to play them. And depending on the operating system that you're using, you will probably need to refresh your games list in order to see them within the menu. There's two ways you can do that. The first would be to just restart your device and then they'll show up, but other operating systems have it built in. So with the Rocknix, you can press start, go into game settings, and then choose update games list. And after everything's been refreshed, we can go into the port section and sure enough, here is that Tetris game. Now all I have to do is press the A button to launch it and away we go. And so that's probably one of the huge benefits of Portmaster is that this team has collected a bunch of different freeware and open source games for the community. And so you can just go through here, download the games directly onto your device and start playing them like that. Now in the intro, I mentioned that the majority of games here are commercial games, but I went back and counted and I was wrong. There are more free games than there are commercial games on Portmaster. It's pretty close. They're about neck and neck. And I think that just goes to show how valuable of a resource this is overall. Okay, so that's it for the ready to run ports. Let's now shift over to the commercial games. And we can find these within the all port section. I wanna start with a specific game and that's gonna be Half-Life. Now this is about halfway through the games list, which is super long. So the easiest way to get through them is to tap on the shoulder buttons. That's gonna page down to make it easier to find your game. Anyway, the installation process for here is going to be very similar. You just press the A button to download the files. Now this isn't downloading the game itself, but rather the package files required to make this port run. We'll add those commercial files here in a minute. While we're in here, let's go ahead and add a couple other games that we're gonna use in this demonstration, including Stardew Valley, as well as Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. And once you've gone through the Portmaster installation of these package files, you can go ahead and close out a Portmaster, turn off your device, and then eject your game's SD card. I'm using a two card setup with Rocknix right now, so I'm just gonna pull out that second SD card, which has 128 gigs on it. So next we need to add those commercial files, and the best way to find information about how to do that is on the Portmaster website. It's a really easy place to remember, it's just portmaster.games. 
games. Up in the top menu, you'll see an option that says games. Just go ahead and click on that and it's going to give you a listing of all the games available. And as of making this video, there are 561 ports. You've got a couple different menu options here. On the top right, you can choose to sort it. So you could sort it by most downloaded, which will show you the most popular games on Portmaster right now. In addition, if you want to see the very newest games added to Portmaster, you can sort it by the most recently added games. Now to the right of that, you can filter out this list. So if you only want to see the ready to run games or the commercial games, you can choose to check or uncheck either box. Okay, so let's get started installing the commercial files with Half-Life. We're going to search for the word Half-Life and then the game is going to show up right there. And you can click on the game and it'll show you more information and instructions on what you need to do in order to download it. And here in the instructions, you can see that it says that you need to copy over over the Valve directory from your Steam installation. And this is one of the easier installation processes and that's why we're going to be doing it first. Now for this guide, I'm going to be doing everything on a Windows PC, but if you're running on a Mac, I have instructions in the written guide for Mac users as well. Either way, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is open up Steam on our Windows PC and then make sure you, of course, have Half-Life already installed on your computer. And after it's been installed, we just need to grab the commercial files directly from our Steam installation. And this is super simple. You'll just right click on the game within your library list and then select Manage Browse Local Files. That's going to pop up an Explorer window, which will have all of your installed files. And sure enough, within here, there is a folder named Valve, and that's the one that they told us we needed to move over on to our SD card. So you probably guessed it already, but that's what we're going to do next. So I put the SD card into my PC, so I'm going to navigate to that. And then within the Rock Next card, there will be a folder named ROMs. We can open that up and then scroll down until we find the Ports folder. And then after we open that one up, you'll see a listing of all the different port games that I've already installed. And within there will be the Half-Life ones. Let's open that up. And sure enough, they've got a folder here already called Valve. And so the process here is going to be drag and drop. We're going to open up these two respective Valve folders and then copy all of the commercial files from my installation on Windows over onto my SD card. And depending on the game, it might take a minute or two, but after that's done, we're good to go. We can eject that SD card, put it back into our device, and then turn it on. Now let's go to the port section of the device and then open it up and then scroll down until we find Half-Life. From there, we can press the A button to launch the game. It might take a minute, depending on whether or not this is your first time launching it, but after that, here we are. We're in the Half-Life menu screen. And just like that, we can now enjoy this 10-minute cutscene in the intro of Half-Life, which is unskippable. It's a little bit annoying, but here we are. And so in the most simplest form, this is how you're going to move over commercial files onto your SD card. You're basically going to take them from your installation. And this method is what I like to call drag and drop. And for the most part, most games are going to be set up like this. Let's do one more using the same method as another quick example. We're going to do it with Bellatro this time. If we go to the Portmaster game page and scroll down in the instructions, it says you just have to take your Bellatro exe file and put it into the appropriate folder. So you guessed it, that's what we're going to do next. I've already installed Bellatro onto my Windows PC, so I'm going to right click on the game within the library list, and then I'm going to go to Manage and Browse Local Files. And sure enough, there is that Bellatro exe file. Now I just need to pull up my SD card file, go into the Bellatro folder within the Ports folder, and then just copy over that Bellatro.exe file and we're good to go. Same thing, eject the SD card, put it back in the device, turn it on, and then sure enough, as soon as you launch the game, you'll be able to jump right into it. One of the nice things about Bellatro is that it actually scales to the resolution and aspect ratio of your screen. So that means with the RGB 30 and its 1 by 1 aspect ratio, it's actually going to fill up the whole screen. However, one thing to note is that with Bellatro in particular, the text is pretty small, even on larger devices like the Steam Deck. And so even on something like the RGB 30, it's really hard to read. And so this is not one of the devices that I really like to play this game with, although it is pretty cool that we can get it running. Okay, for our next commercial game installation, we're going to do something that's a little bit more complicated. We're going to do Stardew Valley. If we look on the Portmaster page, you can see that it requires the compatibility version of this game. That might sound intimidating, but it's literally just one extra step. So let's go ahead and try it out. Once again, I'm going to already install Stardew Valley on my Windows PC, but now we're going to right click on the game and then select Properties. Once this window pops up, go into the Beta section and then under Beta Participation, choose the option that says Compatibility. This will prompt Steam to download and install a new updated version of Stardew Valley, which will be that compatibility version. This means that the game will work with 32-bit systems, including those handhelds that we want to play this game on. Anyway, once the game has been updated to the compatibility version, it's going to be listed under the library. Now we can right-click on it, select Manage, and then Browse Local Files like we have before. And then of course, same process. We're going to go into our SD card, go into the Ports and then Stardew Valley folder, and then we want to open up a subfolder called Game Data. And now we just want to grab 
all the files from Stardew Valley and then drag and drop them over into the SD card. Now this game is relatively large, it's about a half gig altogether, so it might take a minute to copy everything over. Either way, once it's done, you are now good to go. Again, eject the SD card, put it in your device, and then start it up. And just like that, you can start farming or whatever it is people do in Stardew Valley. I've never actually really played this game. And again, the nice thing about this port in particular is that it will scale to the resolution and aspect ratio of your screen. This actually makes it a pretty ideal way to play it on the Palkitty RGB 30. And we're going to stick with the RGB 30 for one more installation. And this is going to be one that's a little bit more complicated. It's going to be for Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. And if you look on the Portmaster page for this game, you can see that it requires the Linux version of this game. Now, if you have a Linux machine, for example, a Steam Deck, it's super easy. You would just install it on the device and then grab those files like we did earlier on Windows. But in this example, we're going to grab those Linux files from a Windows PC. And you can do the same process on a Mac with a couple different changes, which I have in my written guide. Either way, let's go back to our Windows PC and then download these Linux files. On your keyboard, press the Windows and R button at the same time, which will bring up the run command. And here we're going to type in this line. It's going to be steam colon slash slash open slash console. After you have that typed out, go ahead and press enter and it's going to open up steam, but on a new tab called console. And here we're going to type in some commands, but not quite yet. We need a little bit more data first. On your web browser, head over to steamdb.info. This is a database that collects a bunch of different information about every Steam game. And here we're going to search for our game, which is Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. And once we're on this page, there are two things that we need to know. The first is the app ID for the game itself. And then also we want to click on the Depots button and get the Depot ID of the Linux version of this game. And that's all we really need. Once we have those two different numbers, we're ready to start the download. I'm going to put both windows on either side just to make things a little bit easier. So on the left, we have Steam under the console tab. And then on the right, we have that Steam database page. So within the console on the left, we need to type in this command, which is going to be download underscore depot. And then we need to add those two different IDs that we just looked at. The first will be the app ID telling it to download Shovel Knight. And that's going to be 250760. Next, we're going to press space and then go into the depot section and find that Linux version. The number here is going to be 250764. And so this is what the command will look like. Download depot space app ID space depot ID. And once you have that typed out, go ahead and press the enter button and it's going to start the download process. Now you're not going to get any indication about how the progress of the download is going. It's just going to kind of freeze on a page like here. And the download is going to be pretty slow. Even though it is a little bit under 300 megabytes, this took about 10 minutes altogether. So this is a great time to grab a snack and drink in case you haven't already. Either way, just give it some time. And after it's done, it's going to say depot download complete. And then the path of where those files are. And the easiest way to get here is to actually copy this entire path. So I'm going to just highlight it with my mouse cursor. And then on my keyboard, I'm going to type control C to copy it. Now I'm going to open up an explore window and within that address bar, I'm going to paste in the path that we just copied. After that, you can press enter and sure enough, right there are all the files that we need from Shovel Knight. And now that we have these files, the process is going to be drag and drop just like it was previously. So we're going to grab our SD card, go into the ports folder and then find Shovel Knight. And then we're going to go into the game data folder, then Shovel Knight folder, and then drag these folders over. And really that's it when it comes to installing a Linux version of any game. You just need to get that app ID and depot ID and then paste everything over. Once you've got all that set up, same process here. We'll eject the SD card, put it in our device, and then start it right up. And so here we are playing Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, one of my favorite platforming games of all time, and we have it working here natively on this device. That's one of the cool things about Portmaster. These are not running via emulation, but all these games are running natively on this Linux firmware. That means that in general, performance is going to be great. You're not going to get your typical audio cracks and slowdowns like you would expect with other high-end games. Okay, so that's a wrap with the Palkitty RGB 30. Let's now move over to a different device and different operating system. And so here we are with MuOS on the rg 35 XXH. Now on this operating system, Portmaster is in a different section. It's within the application section right here. But really when it comes down to it, it's the exact same process. We can start up Portmaster, it might do an update, and then we'll be back in this same menu. So let's install a couple games while we're here as well, just to show you what the process is going to be like. The first game I want to try is this one called Render 96X. This is a port of Super Mario 64 that runs at 60 frames per second with some enhanced 3D modeling as well. 
And so let's download the package first and then we'll add the commercial file here in a moment. Let's also install another commercial game while we're here. Let's do Sonic Mania this time. And again, the process here is gonna be identical to what we were doing previously. Once you have those games installed, we can exit out of Portmaster. And then when you're in the Moo OS main menu, you can go down to shut down and then turn your device off. And then of course, we'll grab our micro SD card and then put it into our Windows PC. Now I'm using a two card setup with Moo OS. So all of my games are on the second card. And you can see here that as I start started installing ports, they also made a ports folder within this card as well. And sure enough, if we open this up, it's going to have a listing of all the ports that I've installed on this device. So let's start by installing Sonic Mania because this one is super easy. It's actually going to be the same drag and drop process that we did previously with Bellatro as well as Half-Life. So back in our Steam library, I've installed Sonic Mania. I'm going to right click on the game within my library tab. And then I'll select Manage and Browse Local Files. And we only need one file, it's the one that's called data.rsdk. And so it's just a matter of dragging and drop that one data file over into our port Sonic Mania folder. And that's really it, we've now installed the port of Sonic Mania on our machine. So same thing here, we'll put the SD card back into our device, go into Explore Content, and then within there you can find your ports folder, you can navigate down and find the game. One of the nice things about Portmaster is that it'll install the box art when it installs the game, so everything's gonna look nice. Anyway, as expected, we're gonna open up Sonic Mania and sure enough, here's the game. And so as you can see with Moo OS, the installation process is very similar to what it was previously. Just bear in mind that Portmaster with this chipset is still in development, so there are quite a few games that won't actually run. But if you've already purchased the game, it's always worth just to see whether or not it's actually going to work, because most of the time it will. Okay, and finally, our last installation demonstration is going to be with that Super Mario 64 game, which requires the original ROM. Here within the MuOS port folder, you can see Render 96X, that's where we need to go. So once you open that up, we just need to drag and drop the ROM file. Now it's relatively simple, but you have to use the correct ROM. It's supposed to be from USA, and it needs to be in a Z64 format. And I have the correct ROM right here. So the last step that I need to do is rename this file. We're going to change it to baserom.us.z64. And really that's all the work that needs to be done. So we can drag and drop this ROM file into the render 96x folder. Now, when we start up the game for the first time, it's going to require us to install all the resources. Essentially, it's going to pull a bunch of assets from the ROM itself and then put it into the port. And so in this menu, you want to press yes, and then just give it a minute because it's not going to give you any indication that something is happening, but you'll know it's working once after a few minutes, it's going to ask you another prompt. And after that, it's going to ask you three more questions of whether or not you want to install any other optional packages. Now, depending on your device and OS, you can just say yes to all of them. It'll enhance everything. Everything. However, with MuOS, at least right now, according to the Portmaster page, you don't want to use any of these. So I'm just going to select no for all of them. Anyway, once it's done, you will be prompted to close it. If you're not able to actually select the close thing, just kind of wiggle around with the different D-pad and buttons. And at some point, it'll actually highlight and you can close out of this part. Anyway, once that's done, it won't show up again. So from then on, every time that you start up this game, it's going to go directly into the actual game. So here we are with a port of Super Mario 64 running natively on the device, so it's going to be super smooth, 60 frames per second, and it has some updated graphics as well. Just bear in mind that Mario is going to look a little bit different because of those updated graphics, so it's not going to be a pure Mario 64 experience, but this is definitely close enough for me. Okay, and so before we start wrapping up, I just wanted to make a couple other notes specifically talking about the different games and devices and how to best use them with Portmaster. One thing to keep in mind is because all of these devices are different shapes and sizes, some games are going to be a better fit for certain devices. For example, with this Tetris game, I prefer to play it on the RG35XX Plus just because this looks like an old school Game Boy. So for me, this is a perfect fit right here. Same thing with the PC port of Zero Ranger. This is a vertical shoot 'em up game that's going to work the best on the PALKD RGB30 because this has a taller screen. Another example would be Super Meat Boy. This is a precision platformer, and so the clicky buttons on the RG35XXSP are going to be a great match for this so that you can get some really precise gameplay. So on the opposite end, for example, you could play Super Mario 64 on the SP, but you're going to have to use it with a D-pad instead of an analog stick, so this may not be a great fit for you. Another thing to bear in mind is that 16x9 games are going to be squished on a 4x3 display. So you're going to see the black bars at the top and bottom, and then also the game itself might look a little bit small. And so in that case, it might be better to use a device that has a 16x9 aspect ratio display like the Palkitty X55. 
I found this one to be a really great fit for those Portmaster games that run at a 16x9 aspect ratio. Another good example would be the RG Arc. This one has a 4x3 display, but it's a 4-inch screen, which means that even 16x9 content still looks pretty big. So even though it is super awesome that you can play some of these PC games on these smaller handhelds, it might not be a perfect fit depending on the type of game, for example, whether or not it's using a 16x9 aspect ratio, or if it's a very text-heavy game. Playing a game like To The Moon, which mostly involves a lot of reading, on a 3.5-inch screen like here on the RG353 PS is not really a perfect combination, but you can still definitely do it to get the job done. And with that being said, that's about it for this video. I'm going to show off a couple other port games that I really enjoyed while doing all of this testing. But the main point here is that if you have a device that can run Portmaster, I would highly encourage you to actually try it out. In addition to all the ready to run games, there are just a ton of different commercial games that are a lot of fun to play as well. And it's always amazing to be able to natively play a game that punches well above its weight class on a device like this. For example, Grand Theft Auto 3 was originally released on the PlayStation 2, but you can play it on the 35XXH, a device that costs maybe $50. And Portmaster also has a huge collection of retro first-person shooter games like Duke Nukem and Quake, as well as Redneck Rampage. And so it's pretty cool to see an entire genre represented within Portmaster along with everything else. Anyway, I could spend all day talking about how awesome Portmaster is and all of the games that you can play on it. But I think the best way to go about it is just to check out their website and scroll through the list and see what you'd like to play as well. So let me know what you think in the comments down below, and then also check out that written guide also linked in the video description. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.